Hello. Um, this is uh, going to be a video on absolute value. And now we can change the current method of completing absolute value problems or solving absolute value equations. Um, and this is going to go further into inequalities as well, eventually. <coughs> so as it stands right now, we have just an absolute value uh, equation, which says that the absolute value of x minus 2 is equal to 4. So um, the traditional way that we're taught how to do this is to break up the absolute value equation into two separate pieces and change the sign on the 4 and uh, then solve each equation separately and come out with eventually, usually, two answers. <coughs> um, in this particular video, I want to discuss a different method where we start looking at what absolute value actually means. <coughs> so I've heard it described a number of different ways, um, but, but one of the easiest things that we can do is we can talk about absolute value as measuring distance. <coughs> so when we start looking at this, particularly absolute value of x, this is going to be the distance from 0. That'll work directly from my particular definition as we get through this. So if we mark 0 out here and we go out to some number, let's say 7 or negative 6, we would see that these distances here are given as 7 and 6, respectively. You notice that distance in the negative direction is still just called 6. If we were measuring it with a measuring tape, it would be 6 inches or 6 feet or 6 meters or what have you. Um, the units here are just always going to end up giving us a positive value. <coughs> so the same can be true for something like this, where we have x minus 2. Now, leveraging this idea from distance, one of the things that we could do is look at this in terms of if we have a number line and our ruler is effectively broken. So instead of having a ruler that has nice values 0 all the way up through say 12, now we have a ruler whose first integer value that we see is 2. This is a weird 8-inch ruler. <coughs> so what we can do is actually start measuring start measuring from the 2-inch mark and then wherever you end up on the scale you just say well everything's going to get shifted back 2 inches until our starting value we just sort of pretend that that was our 0 and then our, let's say it measured out to uh, 6, we would then move starting location back to where we think 0 would be, and then we would also move our endpoint back to the 4. We wouldn't actually be able to see this distance but we see the distance in its exact same form between 2 and 6. <coughs> On a number line, we'd say that, well, we're measuring from 2. So we want to go a certain distance in the positive direction or a certain distance in the negative direction. If we go uh, 3 in this direction, we end up at negative 1. We want to go like 5 positive direction we end up all the way at 7. We could do all sorts of stuff like that. So, what I want to look at is 
<clears throat> whenever we measure distance, between two numbers. We end up subtracting them. And again we talked about the absolute value specifically as just finding the distance between these two numbers. In this case this is some x value that we don't know what it is and 2. <clears throat> so what we could do is draw out a number line and say that we want to find the distance between 2, our target value, and some x that we don't know where it is on this number line. So the distance between, distance between, x and 2 will be equal to 4. So we know that the distance is exactly equal to 4. So if we come out to the right, a distance of 4, or if we come out to the left, the same distance of 4, we will land at two values. In the positive direction, this is 2 plus 4, ends up being 6. And in the negative direction, this is 2 minus 4, and this ends up at negative 2. And we end up at exactly these locations. Because again, we wanted, we wanted the values that were exactly 4 away from our target value 2. So this gives us the solution that x is going to be either negative 2 or 6. The curly brackets here just tell us that we can pick any of the numbers in this following set and they are all individually solutions for the above equation. <coughs> Alright, so we can also do this with other So let's do the absolute value of 3x minus 1 is equal to 7. <coughs> so here we're looking at finding the distance between these two objects, 3x over here and 1 over here. So the distance between some value, 3x, we don't know where it is, and 1, which we know exactly where it is, is going to exactly be equal to 7. So again, we go 7 in the positive direction, 7 in the negative direction, mark those locations, and then we say, okay, 1, if we go 7 in the positive direction, this is going to get us to 8. And if we go 7 in the negative direction from 1, we're at negative 6. These are, again, the exact locations that we want. <coughs> But the problem is that here we have 3x instead of just x. So, there's an interesting little bit I figured out. We can scale the entire picture down by a factor of 3. So if you divide every single number in the entire picture by 3, this gets us a scaled down version of this exact same problem. <coughs> Those of you who actually do like your fractions, this is not really a surprise. You could factor out this 3 that was sitting in front of the x if you really wanted to. Factor it out from both of these terms. Get it out front because the absolute value of uh, two sets of numbers multiplied together is going to be their individual absolute values. <laughs> so the absolute value of 3 would just be 3 on the outside. On the inside we'd have x minus 1 third and then we could divide this off and make it 7 thirds on the right hand side. If we translated this back to the original picture, let's actually write that out this time. So the absolute value of 3 times x minus 1 third, 7, the absolute value of 3 times the absolute value of x minus 1 third, is also equal to 7. This is just 3. And then we can divide both sides by 3. x minus 1 third is equal to 7 thirds. <coughs> 
And now if we draw the picture, just like we did up here, for this one, we'll see that this is exactly what we have in red. We're going to move from a target value of one-third. This is our target value in here. Finding the distance between just x. So divide 3x by 3, and we just get x. <clears throat> All right, we're trying to find the distance between x and one third, and we know that the distance is exactly seven thirds. So 7 thirds up from 1 third is going to be 8 thirds. Again, numerators add, denominators are just telling you what units we have. And then we go down 7 thirds from 1 third, we get negative 6 thirds, which is the same as negative 2. So we get these exact values, and x is going to be exactly again. Now negative 2 and 8 thirds, as we said in the one above. <coughs> Alright, so what about when we don't have something as nice as this? So 2x plus 7 is equal to 5. <coughs> Alright, this is kind of gross, but we can apply the same principles as we did over here. Now the thing is that we're still looking for the difference between these two numbers here. The difference is going to be between 2x and some number, which again has to be subtracted from 2x. Well, what number can we subtract from 2x that looks exactly like 2x plus 7? Right, if we make this subtract 2x and negative 7, now we get, if we simplify this, 2x plus 7. This is what we're looking for. <clears throat> so make it absolute value 2x minus a negative 7 equals 5. And now we can go back to the same picture that we had done before. Our target value will be at negative 7. We're trying to find the distance between it and 2x. And the distance is equal to 5. And exactly 5, both positive and negative directions. So now if we go up 5 from negative 7, we'll land at negative 2. And if we go down, neg uh, down 5 from negative 7, we'll end up at negative 12. Again, we are at each of these locations, so drop points. And then again, we don't have x, we have 2x, so divide everything by 2 in order to scale down this picture. So this will end up being x on the number line. Our target value ends up becoming negative 7 halves. It's not super important what our target value is going to be, because it's not actually part of our solution, but it is nice to have a complete picture. Negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. Negative 12 over 2 is negative 6. And then our distances end up being 5 halves. <clears throat> and in this particular case, x values that are accepted are now negative 6 and negative 1. <coughs> so, um, this was a bit of an invention that I made um, probably about six years ago or so, um, about 2014, and uh, I've been using it ever since in my pre-calculus classes. Most people take to it pretty nicely. Um, they think it looks alright. <laughs> um, I'll show you some of the more complicated versions in the next video.
and we'll see exactly what kinds of limitations this might have.